Do you have a million dollars? Then you may be able to invest in a very unique pet, a real dinosaur. This is about how much paleontologist Jack Horner estimates it will cost to bring the long extinct reptiles back to life. Just imagine how, in five years, the characters of the legendary Jurassic Park will walk around modern megalopolises alongside of their owners. But guess what? The implementation of this incredible idea has already begun. So, what are we missing to clone dinosaurs just like Dolly the sheep? Of course, a DNA sample. Back in the 1980s, a certain John Tkach from the American city of Bozeman, Montana, founded a secret science project called the Extinct DNA Research Group. Project members believe that somewhere in amber, the body of an ancient insect, preferably a mosquito, was preserved, which, right before its death, bit a reptile. So, in the digestive system of these bloodsuckers from the past, could be the remains of a stranger and ideally dinosaur DNA. This fantastic hypothesis formed the basis of the best-selling book by Michael Crichton, Jurassic Park. Alas, even having studied millions of samples of insects frozen in amber resin, the researchers recognized the complete folly of this venture. So, scientists proceeded for 15 years to search for traces of DNA in dinosaur fossils. Paleontologist Mary Schweitzer managed to find blood cells, blood vessels, and some proteins, one of which was collagen, in the remains of these ancient reptiles. But it turned out that this find was not enough for the resurrection of dinosaurs. A team of experts from Manchester analyzed the traces of collagen in the remains of a Tyrannosaurus and came to the conclusion that the isolated collagen bears similarities to the collagen of ostriches, and it makes no sense to use this organic material. Australian scientists finally put an end to the dream of cloning dinosaurs, making a sensational statement. The complete destruction of genetic material occurs after 6.3 million years. Given that dinosaurs became extinct about 65 million years ago, there's no chance of finding their genes. But scientists didn't let this get them down for very long. Jack Horner, a paleontologist who worked on Jurassic Park and the rest of the Jurassic Park series, suggested resurrecting the dinosaurs in a completely different way. His bold design is called Chickenosaurus. All that's needed to bring his idea to life is to wake up the preserved but inactive dinosaur genes in the chicken embryo. So you might ask, are birds really dinosaurs? Horner will tell you, yes, of course. Therefore, we just need to change them so that they look like dinosaurs. The first step is to start with the modern descendants of dinosaurs. It's known that birds and alligators are evolutionary descendants of theropods, bipedal carnivorous dinosaurs, which include the Velociraptor and Tyrannosaurus rex. The only thing left is to solve three basic genetic engineering problems that will lead from an ordinary chicken to a creature similar to a miniature Velociraptor. This is the formation of a long tail, the development of a beakless, toothy head, and the creation of limbs with fingers and claws instead of wings. The scientific community did not take Horner's venture seriously at first. His project was more like a fantastic plot for a new dinosaur saga than a serious initiative. But in 2015, his followers, Arhat Abzanov from Harvard and Bart Anjan Buller from Chicago, were able to grow chicken embryos with reptile faces instead of the usual bird's beak. They sought to understand how, at the molecular level, the process evolved for turning snouts into beaks and reptiles, or future birds. The scientists introduced chemicals into the chicken embryos that blocked the activity of special proteins responsible for beak growth. As a result, 
a broad, rounded snout without a beak formed in the embryos. At this stage, the experiment was concluded since the point of the research was not to create any mutants. Scientists figured out tooth development even earlier. In 2006, Matthew Harris, in his laboratory at the University of Wisconsin, found a way to stimulate a gene that is responsible for the appearance of teeth, activated it, and bred chickens with teeth. And now, according to Horner, we can make teeth, however, without enamel, since that gene was lost by birds. To make real dinosaur teeth, you'll have to create several transgenic individuals and bring the gene for enamel back. In 2016, the scientific world was again shocked by strange news. Chilean scientists managed to grow a chicken with dinosaur legs. A team of biologists and geneticists from Chile had grown the embryo of an unusual transgenic chicken whose legs resembled the hind legs of dinosaurs. The main difference between birds and dinosaurs, as the researchers explain, is the arrangement of their fibula. In dinosaurs, the tibia and fibula are approximately the same length, while in all birds, except for penguins, the fibula is much shorter than its big sister. The team of João Botello of the University of Chile tried to turn back the clock and return the bones of bird legs to their original state, turning off a special gene that suppresses the development of the fibula. This discovery became the next piece of the genetic puzzle for the resurrection of dinosaurs and the transformation of the chicken into Chickenosaurus. So, the scientists managed to solve two of the main challenges to recreate the dinosaur, but the issue of the formation of the tail has not yet been solved. In modern birds, the tailbone, called the pygostyle, with short fused vertebrae and muscles attached to it, is hidden under the feathers. It serves as a support for the steering feathers. But the most interesting detail is that at the early stage of development of the chicken embryo, the embryo still has a tail. At some point, a genetic switch flips and the tail disappears. Horner's team studied all the available information about the mechanisms of tail formation in vertebrates and brought out 23 mutations that cause a similar tail shortening in mice. It remains still to be determined which among them gives the birds short tails. Turn them off and then fluffy chicks with long tails like a dinosaur will appear. So far, this is only in theory. All that's been done up to now is to attach artificial tails to chickens to recreate the dinosaur's gait. During the experiment, the researchers found that in a chicken with a tail attached, the center of mass is shifted back, which causes a more vertical position of the femur when the chicken is standing, and a greater displacement of this bone during movement. But Horner considers the return of forelimbs to the chickenosaurus the easiest step. An x-ray of the chicken wing shows the same bones as are found in the forelimb of a dinosaur. They don't need to be produced. Apparently, the paleontologist has left this final stage for dessert. The team working on the high-profile Chickenosaurus project believes that a little more research and the Chickenosaurus will be born. Horner himself estimates the finishing touches will require about $300,000 to a $1 million and one year of painstaking work. Says Horner, I don't see any difference between a Dino chicken and a Chihuahua. This is just another genetically modified animal. The paleontologist connects the future of the project with the development of the CRISPR-Cas9 system for targeted genome editing. In just a few years, this system has demonstrated such potential that it can change almost any living organism, including humans. Of course, there are risks. CRISPR still encounters errors when changing the genome. Nevertheless, the system remains the best tool for gene editing. And according to Horner, this is exactly what scientists have been waiting for in order to finally resurrect the dinosaurs. But not all of his colleagues agree that the project needs to be brought to a successful conclusion. 
They ask themselves, what will the consequences of such a gross interference in the genome of a complex organism be? Can we take the liberty and spin the wheel of evolution back? And there's some truth to this. We're so preoccupied with the creation processes that we forget to ask ourselves, do we have a moral right to do this in the future? How will similar genetic experiments turn out for humanity? Write in the comments if you'd like to go for a walk in this Jurassic Park. When the video gains 15,000 likes, we'll tell you how far scientists have come in resurrecting mammoths. In the meantime, the instructions are like, comment, and subscribe.